Well, hello. We are going to be talking about the LinkedIn profile in this video. So we'll go over the actual profile, what you should include, what shouldn't be included, how you should write some things uh, in the profile, uh, and really how you should just set your profile up to, to show the best results for recruiters and those who are searching out and finding your profile. The LinkedIn profile is becoming uh, increasingly more important in the job search process. Some of you might have already uh, applied for a job online through one of those online hiring application systems and had to connect your LinkedIn profile to it. Um, and then in other instances, sometimes when you submit your applications, people who are going to be interviewing you or taking a look at your application will regularly just search you up on LinkedIn to see what you have listed there and whether you've interacted on LinkedIn uh, before. So this video will kind of help you make sure you have the things that are necessary to your LinkedIn profile and make sure that you have them ready to go for when that recruiter or new connection you're hoping to make uh, views your profile and is uh, waiting to connect with you. So we'll start by just looking at the overall LinkedIn profile. Uh, the profile hasn't changed much uh, in like its content since it uh, came about. It still has some of the similar things like featured skills, experience, profile, picture, those types of things. Um, the overall structure of the profile may have changed in design some, but much of the features are still present from, what, from when, it, uh, when LinkedIn first came about. So we'll start by going uh, down from top to bottom, piece by piece, and putting together a little bit of uh, LinkedIn strategy for you and how you should uh, portray yourself uh, on LinkedIn. So we'll start here with this header photo. Uh, the header photo is oftentimes just generic for you. It's like a blue background. It kind of looks a little bit businessy, and you might just want to. You might have thought to yourself, maybe I just want to keep that, you know, regular header photo that they give me. You know, I would recommend you actually change that out and get yourself a unique header photo that kind of discusses a couple things. It shows who you are, where you want to be, some of your goals maybe, something that really describes you. Um, for instance, you can see I graduated from Wittenberg and now I work for Wittenberg. So it makes sense that my header uh, profile, you know, cover photo here is uh, something related to Wittenberg. I also regularly connect and network with Wittenberg alumni to get them involved with our students. Uh, and so it's really something that resonates with the alumni that I connect with when it's a picture that they recognize from the campus that they love. So this is just something that resonates with whoever's going to view your profile. For instance, I've seen some students who maybe you want to work in Chicago or you want to work in Indianapolis. I've seen them uh, make their header photo some type of skyline of the city they want to work in, for instance. There's a lot of things you can do with this. And the overall rule of thumb is to keep it professional, but at the same time have a little bit of fun with it and choose something that's going to speak more about you than uh, maybe some of the, st the drier stuff on the rest of your profile. This is one of the creative elements of your profile that you want to make sure really speaks to your goals, your skills, or what your background is. If we move down, we have, again, uh, something that most people probably already have on their LinkedIn profile, but it's the, it's the profile picture. Obviously, you've heard it time and again, you want to make sure this is professional. This is not the same as your Facebook profile picture, your Twitter profile picture that can be anything and everything. You want to make sure that this picture is professional and business attire uh, of some sort. Now that doesn't mean you can't have uh, a picture that's more apt for an environment like Google or uh, or a more like business professional environment like JP Morgan, for instance. Not every business environment is going to look for a person in a suit and tie, for instance. If you know what industry you want to be in and what their you know what their professional uh, look is like, then make sure you have some type of professional picture of you and uh, you know a business you know type of shirt or something like that that will allow you to 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 look the part, but at the same time stay professional for the organization that you're looking to apply for. A suit and tie is not necessary, like I said, but it just depends on the type of environment you're looking to, to work in. But it always stays professional. Then as you move down in your profile, you obviously have your name. This is auto-filled from creating your account. Uh, and then you have what we call the headline. This is a pretty important part because this also shows up in recruiting searches or searches from other connections when they're trying to find people with certain skills or traits. Uh, it's kind of interesting because when you add a career and experience on LinkedIn, it automatically makes this headline the job title. Uh, and most people think that that's fine and they leave it at that. 
what I would do is I would recommend editing this and adding something a little bit more than just your job title. It'll set you apart from most people on LinkedIn as they, as most people do just leave it as the job title. Uh, and it'll tell a recruiter a little bit more about who you are. This can be fun as well, as long as it stays business professional and talk about a little bit about you, what your skills are, maybe what you value. A lot of people write this in different ways. What I would suggest is kind of browsing around LinkedIn for other profiles to see how people have written these uh, these headlines. A lot of people say something like determined student looking for opportunities in finance uh, with experience or something like that. You just, again, you want to keep it short, but you also want to have fun with it and make sure that they can get out of this headline some keywords uh, that they're looking for uh, in the career that you're targeting. So if you're interested in finance, maybe you want to put something about pursuing a career in finance up here. You just want to make sure that when people search on LinkedIn for things like finance professionals, they can uh, the, the, the keywords in your headline will target you as someone to pull up in the search results. So have a little bit of fun with this. Then the next, uh, the next uh, line here on the profile is your school and your current employment. Usually uh, your employment will show up and then the school you went to, obviously I'm working at Wittenberg and I went to Wittenberg. So it's both, uh, so they're both showing up in this section. It'll also show the geographic area in which you're working as well as the approximate number of connections you have. Uh, once you top 500 though, it usually just says 500 plus. As we go down, we'll also get to something called the summary. It's a short, you know, section where you can write a little bit about you, your professional goals, your experience, where you've been, where you're going, where you've come from, what you hope to achieve, some skills you have. It can be short, uh, but it also needs to have some substance to it. So I wouldn't get too much longer than what you see here with a couple paragraphs, uh, but it can be short or long as long as it really accomplishes uh, getting your, you know, your story across to whoever's looking at your profile. The headline is the place for you to sum up everything really quickly. The summary is really for you to go into a little bit more detail with not uh, burdening the reader of your profile with, you know, 10 or, you know, five or 10 minutes worth of reading. You just want a couple, you know, a couple paragraphs that they can read within a minute or so as they're looking at your profile. And this, obviously, you can see I've included a little bit about who I am, what my past is like, what I've done, and then where I'm at now and what I'm currently doing and how I can see connecting with others benefiting uh, my current employment here in the second paragraph, along with some skills that uh, I think, uh, you know, someone might be looking for at the same time. Do something like this with your profile. And again, you don't, you can have fun with this. You don't have to make it two paragraphs. You can make it one. You can really write the, the summary how you see fit, but make sure it tells your story and gets across the most important values that you have and experience that you have to whoever might be reading your profile. One thing I always would suggest too is to make sure that you include some of the most important stuff within the first two lines because whoever's looking at your profile is only going to see the first two lines of that summary and, they're, and it's going to need to make them want to read more uh, or click the see more button. So you want to make sure you interest them enough in your experience and, and what you bring to the table or who you are that they want to read more about you uh, and actually do the extra step of clicking that see more button. When people are going through hundreds of LinkedIn profiles, they need a reason sometimes to do the extra work. It may seem trivial to be clicking the see more button, but when you're looking at that many profiles, that may uh, uh, you know decide how much time you spend on a person's profile versus someone else's. So you really need to interest them in the, those first two sentences of your summary so that they read more of it. The next section is what we call the your dashboard. This is something that's only visible to you. Uh, only you can see this and it kind of gives you a little bit of stats or numbers about how many people viewed your profile, your posts, uh, and then how often you've appeared in search, you know, search appearances. LinkedIn will automatically rate your profile and tell you some things you need to approve upon to reach the all-star status. So until you reach the all-star status, LinkedIn will regularly give you things to work on on your profile so that you can uh, eventually get to that all-star status point. Uh, listen to those suggestions because LinkedIn is really the deciding factor of whether you show up or don't show up in recruitment searches or uh, connection searches on LinkedIn. So make sure you're really following their suggestions uh, about what you should be doing. 
The next section is your activity. It shows a little bit about how you engage others on LinkedIn. A lot of people create their LinkedIn profile and then they leave it. Uh, they leave it sit after it's updated. But really, it's helpful for you and for those that you connect with to really engage with each other like you would on a Facebook or Twitter, but in a more professional manner. We'll talk about how to engage with posting and sharing links and commenting in another video. But just for you to notice, uh, that stuff does show up on your profile and what you and how you've interacted with other people. So it's really helpful for you to make sure you're active on your LinkedIn profile and helping others. The next, the next section is the experience section, and arguably this is the most important. It lays out what you've done and what experience you have. Ultimately, you can write a summary, and you can write a headline, and you can have a beautiful profile, but if you don't really bring skills to the table that are going to be really helpful for a recruiter looking at your profile, um, it, it might not, you know, it, it might not uh, fare well for you in the end. So you want to make sure that you really focus on this experience section, and make sure you lay out what you've brought in previous careers, even if it's something as simple as uh, leadership experience or communication experience. It doesn't really uh, um, help you out just to list that, but it really helps you spell that out. So if you spell out some of that experience uh, more in depth in this experience section, you'll really help yourself out. Obviously, a couple things I'll mention here that people don't do with the experience section that I think they should. The first is they don't connect their job position with the actual organization LinkedIn page. That's how you get this icon that shows up here. And it just looks a lot more professional if you actually connect your employment position with the, with the organization's LinkedIn page. Uh, it helps you get found easier uh, in searches because people can search for people at certain companies or organizations, for instance. Uh, if, if people recognize, for instance, my Naked Lime as a good source of talent for digital marketing people, they can search for people who work for Naked Lime. And it's really more helpful for you if you can link yourself with those organizations uh, than not. And a lot of people will just put in something in there um, and it will show up with no icon here and it won't really be connected to the actual organization they work for. It's really easy to do because as you're adding a new experience and you type in your company, it pops up and autofills with some of these places you can work for. So if you work for JP Morgan, make sure you connect it with that company profile. The other thing I would recommend is to make sure you include some experience points like you do on your resume. A lot of people just include their position, their position title and time spent at the organization on uh, their LinkedIn profile, but it's a lot more helpful for you if you can actually include some experience points about how you made a difference in those positions. Again, these won't show up regularly on mobile searches unless they click, but on the desktop version, these show up right away and people can read them and say, hey, this person knows SEO or they know HTML and metadata and schema and digital marketing, and those are things we value and we want in our organization. Make sure you put some things here that will catch the eye of, of a recruiter looking for your uh, for, for the experience you have. If you're looking to apply for certain positions or you're looking for a certain career field, try to search out some job descriptions of the positions that you would want and see what keywords they look for and try to find those keywords in your own experience and include them in this section. But make sure you always use past tense uh, experience points here that really show what you've developed in and any type of results that you've had. For instance, any numbers like this 3% conversion goal down here on paid search results or anything that really talks about success that you've had in your career will be helpful for these experience points. But make sure you include them like you do your resume. Most people don't and I think it hurts them. So let's keep moving on. Uh, obviously your experience uh, will be as long as you let it be with relevant experience. Obviously, some people only include relevant experience on LinkedIn, but for most graduates and college students, they include all the experience that they've had because it's usually only a couple positions uh, over the course of time. Until you have 10 or you know 15 years of experience, you might want to list every single experience that you've had, including internships on here. That way you can make sure you're not selling yourself short uh, for someone looking at your profile. The next section is education. Talks a little bit about where you went, what degree you have. Uh, again, connect it with the university. And the only thing I'll really say here is that some of the experiences or things you were involved in can go under your university. Don't add that 
stuff as like extra things on your resume, but put it here. Make sure if you are a member of the uh, Honor Society of this or that or Phi Beta Kappa or Phi Eta Sigma or whatever it is, make sure you put it in here. All your honors and the awards that you've received, you can even put professional or like uh, college athletics in here if you want to. It's just a quick mention. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't need to deserve a whole section of your LinkedIn profile, but it's a quick mention under the education section. And it's a really appropriate place for you to put that stuff. Again, you can uh, have featured skills. This has been here since early in LinkedIn's days. You can add a lot of skills that you think you have experience in, and then other people who come to your profile can endorse you for those skills. So obviously, public speaking, I have 18 endorsements for that skill set, leadership 15. Uh, this is not the place for you to uh, just list and list uh, a laundry list of hundreds of skills that you think you have, everything that you can find in the dictionary that you think you're able to do. Make sure you put only the relevant skills that you have in here from jobs that you've uh, participated in. You don't want to have tons and tons of skills in here because you want to make sure people can endorse your skills, and often they'll endorse three skills at a time. So you want to make sure that you include the most relevant skills so that those populate first. Uh, again, not a laundry list, but just some concise uh, set of skills that, that you think you have from previous careers. In addition to skills, you can also receive endorsements on LinkedIn. And I don't have any of those currently on this profile, but what I would recommend is you can request endorsements from people. Um, so say you want to beef up your LinkedIn profile a little bit and you think endorsements might help you. What you can do is say you have a professor like Dr. Bodie in the business department who you think would be great for um, uh, providing you a recommendation. What you can do is you can go to that person's LinkedIn profile and under their name here, you can click this little uh, button that will allow you to request a recommendation from him. You can it'll allow you to send a little message to Dr. Bodie and say, "Hey, I'm, you know, hoping that you might uh, you know, give me a little bit of a recommendation and talk about the leadership that I've uh displayed in group work in your class, for instance, or maybe it's an internship supervisor you want to request a uh, recommendation from about your experience with them. It's a good way to add some more uh, depth to your LinkedIn profile uh, rather than just listing some skills that people can endorse. So request those recommendations. Then at the same time here at the bottom, there's a lot of other things under the accomplishments section that you can add. If you click the little plus button here, you can see you can add certifications, coursework. Again, I wouldn't really list all the coursework you've taken at Wittenberg. If you're, if you're applying for a digital marketing position, maybe you want to list a digital marketing course, uh, but I wouldn't go through here and add 100% of the courses you've taken at Wittenberg. That just uh, it, it looks too surface level and, and you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, uh, add a too much to your LinkedIn profile that it, that, that, it, that it takes forever to get through. So add only relevant stuff here. But you can add honors and awards. Again, if you had honors and awards from college, I might add those under the uh, education portion of your profile. Any languages you've sp spoken or you speak, um, patents you have, projects you've worked on. If you've written an article that's published in a journal or a newspaper, for instance, you can add that on here. Uh, if you've taken professional exams for certain types of employments, um, there's a lot of professional exams out there. You might want to include your scores on here um, and then any organizations you're a part of. Uh, like you can see here, I have five organizations. You can see I'm the Alumni Relations Advisor for uh, Beta Theta Pi at Wittenberg. I'm a board member for a local church in Springfield, and I've been a part of boards uh, across uh, different organizations before that I list on here. Uh, list those organizations and those professional organizations that you're a part of. Any certifications that you might have, because I'm, I was in digital marketing, I have a lot of digital marketing certifications like Bing and from Google. Uh, and I also have a mental health first aid for higher ed uh, certification. You can list that stuff on here and that'll add some value to your profile as well. Uh, and then at the bottom is some interests. So any companies or organizations that you follow will regularly show up in this interest section. You can follow people, you can follow businesses, you can follow universities, and that's, this will regularly show up in your news feed when they post something, but it also shows up on your profile and shows other people what you might be interested in. Those are the profile sections I have, but there's also a lot of other profile sections that you can list on here. There's uh, nonprofits uh, that you've worked for you can list on here, volunteer experience that you have. Um, so play around with this and see what you're able to uh, 
how you're able to design your LinkedIn profile. Really though, you just want to make sure that you're providing the most concise uh, representation of yourself possible. People want to make sure they look for they're finding the, the information they're looking for in an employee very quick uh, when they're reviewing your LinkedIn profile. And you want to make sure it's clean and easy for them to do that. So hopefully this was uh, helpful for you in developing your LinkedIn profile. Uh, again, uh, try try different things and see what works. And always follow LinkedIn's advice. There's a lot of articles and blogs out there that talk about um, what your LinkedIn profile should have, how it should be written. Uh, read some of those and really discern for yourself what might be best for the career field that you're looking into. So hopefully this helped and uh, uh, you'll watch more videos on the Wittenberg Business uh, Video Library.